Hey, what's going on? Welcome back to the Airburn Podcast. This is season three, episode 31, the finale. This is all we've been waiting for. <laughs> but um, today's title is called Owning and Realizing. And that is important because we're continuing the eating season. So every title has to begin with ING and ING for the ink season is I and God. So I will, I wouldn't be myself without God, without God's help, without God's guidance. Um, (laughs) most time I don't listen because I'm too busy inside my own head overthinking because I'm a self sabotager to the highest degree. So today we're going to be talking about, Own up to me, own up to my own mistakes and realizing a lot of things that I could have done or just realizing the things that I have done in the past that it makes, now I feel like it all makes sense now to what I've been talking about and what's been going on. So here we go. And I feel like I need to do a lot of owning up because I feel like it makes me who I am. And as an individual in making the mistakes that I have made, I feel like <laughs> and maybe people, some people listen like, oh, maybe that's what you get. Uh, not necessarily. There's people that have done stuff to me. Not say I deserved it or anything like that. And there's people that turn it back on me based off of, I guess, misinformation or whatever. I I no longer, I no longer talk to those people. And I don't wish to, because if you decide to not talk to me, that's your that's your problem at the end of the day. Uh I know I didn't do anything, so that's that. Uh And that's not directed towards like anybody in specific. Um, Not necessarily, but uh, I know it's family that don't talk to me. So that is probably more directly, it's more directed towards them. So that's that and is what it is. So it ain't hurting me. Um, But I feel like what I've been realizing a lot lately and uh, even more, because I I uh, I spoke on it briefly in like season two, I believe. Uh, a lot of what I do, <laughs> that's one of a big toxic trait of mine. If I can't talk to the person I want, I will talk to someone else just to pass the time. Not. Like I'm leading them on or anything, I will I would just talk to them, just for conversation, because hmm, I don't want to get in my own head, and I like communicating. I I like talking. It, it depends on about what the conversation is, though. But yeah, but I find out that um that talk straight has been very very off-putting because people tend to catch feelings and (laughs) a lot of I've come to the realization that a lot of people I have talked to have been uh, filling a spot, filling a void for me not having to talk about a a person in particular and just hiding those feelings. So those feelings have been divvied out to other people that it shouldn't have been because if you've been listening, um, I, I, I want one person in particular. That's simple as that. And it's always been that way. I just been keeping those feelings tucked away because it felt like I had to, cause I couldn't have it as a safety net. Um, 
So I've been using it as a defense mechanism in a way, but in a bad way, because I definitely have talked to people that remind me of this person, and almost down to their name, um, their height, their favorite color. <laughs> it's ridiculous. And a lot of mistakes that I did make with this person when I was talking to them. I know I didn't stand up before them as much as I should have because I know I've seen the, the facial remarks, uh, some slick comments from family members that was not okay at all. Things I've done are not okay. Uh, pushing people away. Because you think that they're better off without you. Depending on the circumstance. But there's other variables involved and wasn't given a chance. And I preach that a lot. Like, nobody gives me a chance or something like that. <laughs> Even when I was a kid, in a, in a way, I always felt like nobody was given a chance. So when I was given an opportunity, I definitely blew it. And probably one of the first times I ever broke a promise and it wasn't even a promise to them, it was a promise to somebody close to them. And in that conversation, it, was, it rings in the back of my mind sometimes. It's like, I let them person down. So, <laughs> and then I continue to let that person down. And I even let the person down I care about. There's even been people that I have dated or even talked to. I had traveled to see because the person that I was in love with used to travel to come see me. So it was like, but it's totally different because you're, you're getting, you're getting to know someone that's like the talking stage. So in a way you traveling to see them mm, all because of your feelings that you have for somebody since that person did it for you. Like, why couldn't you do it for another person? So, but it doesn't match up because those, you don't have the same feelings for that person that you have for this person. Because for me, I know I definitely bottled up my feelings. Like I said, I bottled them up and I just put them to the side. Like men do. We put things in certain boxes <laughs> and we just leave it there. And like I said, I have a great memory. So I have, it's things that I definitely remember that I, that I have for different projects because I'm an artist and like designs. But even when I got in back touch with the person that I'm, I've been talking about these last few episodes, there's some stuff I didn't even remember. And I feel like I should because it's, uh, it's not okay. It's a touchy situation, but it's not okay. Mm-mm. You don't hurt the people you love. So that junk sucks. And more importantly, you don't push them away. Especially when you had a love like I type of love that I had and I felt like I had. I just didn't like in a way I did realize it, but I didn't because that codependency. That codependency is crazy. Um uh, so you you forced to make a decision based off of like a stability in some form or like you, or safety. So you feel like okay, I know this is safe, but I don't know if this is safe for me. And so your judgment is clouded with even before you even make your decision in the first place, and you feel like you're making a decision for that person that's best for them, but. You're in the situation as well, so I would say if anybody's listening, make think things through all the way. Uh, if you have to do a pros and cons list, do that. Do not, do not base the decision off because you feel like you're doing what's best for that person and. You know it's gonna hurt you in the end too. So like, why not do what's best for 
both of y'all. <laughs> and like I said in the past episode, I, it's so many things that I feel like were changed and then some things that would be different. Like this podcast, this podcast would probably be uh, a co-host, co-hosted podcast. And it still would be about life, but it will give you more advice on a relationship level and things and beyond. Uh, yeah, probably have the similar audience, uh, but I don't think it would lose the message. It wouldn't lose the message at all. It wouldn't lose the message at all. And a, a lot of things I've been realizing is like, I, I I know I never stopped loving this person. And self sabotage, man, I'm telling you. Because in the moment that you're making these decisions or you're like even saying like or even texting a certain thing, you, you gotta stop. You gotta stop and think, like, wait. Don't react right there in right there in the moment. Um Stop and think and like really clearly think about it as well. Like, what are you saying? Like, especially if you can, you pause and reassess the situation. Like, okay, I can't make this accusation. I, I, this is not me. This is not them. So what am I saying? <laughs> and like I said, I'm my own, my own worst enemy. So it's like, yeah, part of me is like, nah, you don't deserve this type of, <laughs> you don't deserve this type of happiness, which is really crazy. That's crazy. To even think about because man, like that's mind blowing. Like it's a part of you that doesn't think you deserve true happiness because things you've been on in your life and like or you feel like somebody's better better off without you. And then like it's like you're traveling it's like history repeating itself. Like, no, come on, wake up. Like you you wouldn't do nothing to hurt this person they wouldn't do anything to hurt you so why are you like you have this bad these bad ideas in your head like oh nah this is why this situation is what it is like come on do we not learn from the past like that's what the past is just for you have to learn from it like if you wasn't living your best life then like what can you do to live your best life now for you make adjustments like if you are doing bad things, um, definitely make changes to make you better. Because I definitely have grown over time, like even even without therapy, because there's times I, I just self-evaluated and got through a lot of things and became mellow because I used to be a very angry, angry-filled person. Uh, similar to sometimes, like I feel like the Hulk or Wolverine, like it was, it was bad. Like I'm so ready to fight because all throughout my life, there's people that met me. You could they could tell you like Prince. <laughs> Not everybody's out to get you, and it it's, it seemed like that. It, like growing up where I grew up, and just like how my childhood was, and like I don't know, every people always having something negative to say. Like okay, I. <laughs> Somebody's always trying to do something to stop you from getting ahead or your progress or getting in the way of something that's meant for you. And here we are. This is exactly what we're talking about right now. Like I allowed my family to get in the way of something that's really was meant for me. And I can't, like I said, I can't sit on this podcast and talk about this stuff. Like I wasn't talking about this since season one. Like, <laughs> It's almost like a blueprint for people to not to do the things I've done. Because I hope not. Please don't. Please don't. Absolutely not. It's not. I don't have no perfect life. And it's not too horrible, horrible life neither. But, like, things definitely could have been better. Because I can't sit here and say, oh, my life was better without this person. Like, if you're listening, like, no, it wasn't. It never was. It never was. It never was. Um... It never was better without you. It's not the same. I never had to. Like, dude, 
the person the person was perfect for me. I didn't have to make any adjustments or like oh nitpick like oh this should be this way. No, it just it was perfect for me. And I guess in the back of my mind, allowed my my family judgment and how they felt like why that I had these feelings for this person be based off of something sexual when it wasn't like. Nah. It was like my heart and my brain was in unison when I made these decisions about her, about her. So, but I let them sway my judgment, but I can't put all the blame on them. It's, and it's not even my whole family. It was certain people like, and for things to move forward, I've definitely there. I want to, some of the people were definitely, well, the ones, not some of them, the ones that had a part in it are definitely going to be apologizing to her, this, to her, uh, if not, they just there won't be any communication there. Like they they'll they'll stay where they're at. Like right? so, and as simple as that. And people might be saying that's not being the bigger person and stuff like that. But I'm I feel like like I said a few episodes ago, if people know what they did and they don't apologize, what is, what are we what are we discussing? There's nothing more to discuss. You know what you did, so like. We're just going to pretend all lives like, no, like, you know, hurt, you didn't hurt anybody. You didn't say these hurtful words on purpose in particular. So where are we getting at? We can't move forward without that. And like, we was always taught not to say, oh, I'm sorry. We always were taught to say, I apologize, but there's been times I have said I'm sorry because I feel like I'm sorry. I, I, I was a sorry person because it did some did some sorry stuff. So, like, they need to say they sorry to to like because that was some sorry stuff. Like, come on, <sighs> like everybody needs to heal, and like mm-mm. you can't bring the same energy to be brought years ago into now because it's Right around the time, me and her first started talking and then eventually dating. So it's like, I think more now, because we got back in touch, like, it's hitting even more harder, the feelings and stuff that's there. Because, because he was, because it was real. He, yeah. Oh, something just fell down. Um, <laughs> because it was real. And you, you, depending on how bad you mess up, you can't. Ultimately, you can't get those, that stuff back. You can only dream of that. And whatever, if you even still dream of the person. All I got is my memories in my art. <laughs> like that drawing with the Mario Kart. Yeah, yeah that, that. That was based. That was based on her. Because I, I know I was looking for her. But. I know I was ultimately I was looking for her and I was looking for her and other people, which is very ridiculous, but love make you do crazy things. So, and when you can't, I guess, give that love to who you want to. So it's like, you try to find who you can get that love to. And most of the people definitely, um, was like some other version of her in some way or fashion between the looks, name, similarities, and things of things that they liked in height, of course, as well. And it, it's really ridiculous. Like, so you can tell that this person really made an impact on my life and for the better. And it wasn't nothing uh, remorseful or anything, anything crazy. Um, and maybe I feel like it should have been that way because, like, I heard this person, and I know I did. Um, and that junk sucks, and it seemed like I continue to do that, and we pushing people away and making them feel like that. I think bad of them. 
because of my self sabotaging and overthinking. And I'm so in tune with my feelings. I know how I feel and I know how I don't feel because yeah, when I'm speaking on whatever I'm overthinking or the self sabotaging, like that's that's the last of what I actually think. And but. Man, I'm telling you, step And then the overthinking, counteracting with each other, or like piggybacking off each other, it sucks because it's, it's no good. It's not good for you. It's not good for the other person that's you, that you're projecting that energy off onto. So and when you finally realize these things, you you feel a sense of wholeness because like, Really, you're empty. You're an empty person, even though you got a lot of these thoughts in your head, but you're empty. Like, that's emptiness speaking, and you're allowing it to speak. It's a part of you, but it's not a good part of you that you shouldn't have. But you're not going to be whole until you realize this and make... You got to actualize the positive things and live through those things. And write it down. And I feel like a great thing. I made this um, realization. There's a great thing to counteract overthinking and not sending what you overthink into a person. Is no um, journaling. I was about to say note taking, <laughs> journaling. Not necessarily like you bad that you have to sit there like you're having a conversation with, your, with yourself, but you just have to journal sometimes. Journal how you're feeling, like to get it out. Um, not necessarily like have I done this? Uh, I've recently been writing some more poems to like for understanding, but I haven't been overthinking because I know. What, what exactly is what exactly is going on, and how it made the person feel? So, uh, the overthinking is, is really out the window right now. Not saying it it won't come up; it probably will. And then that's when I will journal and like, nah, because it can't can't keep doing this and expecting some different result. Because it's gonna be you be me pushing the person even further away, and that's not what you want. I'm pretty sure that's not what they want. You can't end up being trying to be somebody's peace, and then it, then trying then you're ultimately disturbing the peace too. It has to be one or the other. You can't you can't do both because you, you look wishy washy. Um, you look dumb doing that too. Like I know I was looking stupid. Right. <laughs> like bro, it's crazy, but I. Uh, it's a simple, I feel like it's a very good sense of maturity and and it shows what type of person you are when you actually realize what you're doing and what harm it could be what harm you're causing uh, because some people can't be mature or be an adult and it's like oh wait like what am I doing wait what is what is this like come on that ain't me but not everybody can do that uh, it sucks. And I know some people tired, like probably listen, like, dang, he's still talking about this. Like, I gotta get out somehow. Like, <laughs> this is a podcast. I said I was gonna be sharing more about me, more who I am, and I have to keep it real. Like, like I said, I felt like the whole podcast was based off a lie because I wouldn't say I'm pretending to be this hopeless romantic. No, I talked about why I I am this hopeless romantic because I had real love and like. I, I want it back. Like this is the type of love people they sing in songs about. And this person can sing. I always wanted somebody that can sing. Like I used to sing. Um but it's a lot of things I I realized I, I, I never got to done. I, I never got to do for them. Never got to cook for them, never got to buy them flowers. Uh, different things, and I'm. I feel like I'm a, the best gift giver. Like a lot of people that receive gifts from me, uh, hopefully they could co-sign that. Um, if they're not, I feel like they are probably telling a story. 
because no, <laughs> I have proof that I am because I, I take in accountability and I take in and remember what people like down to the very last detail. So I never got to do any of that for her. So, but yeah, it sucks. And no, I haven't really been sad. I have, but not like up until now, like, cause I, I had to, I had to do this podcast and I'm not doing this to save face. No. Like I, I, like I said, my podcast and my accountability partner, uh, if I'm talking about something on it, I have to do it. So me not doing the podcast, then I'm not keeping to up, keeping up with what, I, what I'm saying. So then that, that's phony. And I have been writing still. There was a point where I couldn't write because I, I remember I had to make a lot of changes. And there's a very important character that's supposed to be in the book because it was the book is based off when I was in college. So it has some changes have to be made and stuff like that. And that's vital to the story. That I feel like it's really important. And I think when y'all finally do read the book, like get your hands on it, uh, it's gonna be great. I'm try I try to write much as it, much as I can every day. Four twenty I have an alarm set on my phone, four twenty five PM every day. I try to write. So if if it's a day that I get home from work, I try to take a shower, take a nap. Now I get up when that alarm goes off. And because I'm not trying to take a nap the whole day, then I'm going to be up all night. And if I definitely don't want to be up all night, if I'm my person, I'm a person that overthinks and stuff. Why would I want to be up all night? No, I'm be up all night with my thoughts. So I'd rather not. <laughs> no, thank you. I would not take that for the 200 Alex, but, um, but yeah, so I try to, I try to fit a night in, nap in and get up at that certain time to write. And of course I game, but I, I try not to game all the time. Cause like, I don't know. It's, uh, it, it felt like he's missing something or something like that. And I try to not get too caught up in the game psychologically because there have been times when I have played the game like when I first started playing this game like because I'm very competitive competitive and I don't like losing so it's like that was part of it and then I think I was taking it out on teammates so I don't know it's like like a lot of stuff I put my heart into so it's like uh, I feel like some people don't and I'm just I'm not a non I'm a non nonsense person. Like and I don't mm -mm, I don't take kindly to to I'm gonna just say malarkey because I if I say the other word that's close to it, my mom's gonna be mad at me because I said I won't be cursing up there anymore. And I've been doing good. So um I'm just saying I haven't been I don't deal well with malarkey. <laughs> that's that's a funny word to me. But I've been designing a lot too, because we we have the group podcast as well, and I just come to a realization like I always wanted that. Like I really, we talked about it in college, and we it came into fruition. Uh, so a little bit surely, like it took some years, but we finally did it, and we've been doing great. And it keeps me steady and keeps me going because I'm like, okay, I, I if I'm doing that podcast, I got to make sure I'm still doing mine. So. We we have some designs. I got three of them right here. One is our Thanksgiving design. I started last year, but I colored our characters. I already colored the other part of it. But yeah, like man, it's just I love art. I love people that's close to me, and that's why I'm that's why I'm talking about it now on the podcast. But I don't want things to seem like a lie. But. I'm gonna show you the designs. I'm still in the paper. So it's my first time taking them out of this paper because I recently got these ones. But yeah, I just this is like a segue into something a little brighter. But I wanted the whole podcast to be down, like, dang, he's still worried about this. But anyway, this design, that's this design is based off Tour Story. But it's the one of the blurred and beyond designs. That's why I picked this color for it to be printed on this shirt. So because it try to Remind you of Tour Story a little bit, but here it is. 
I did it on a computer, but of course, this was like based off when we was doing season two of Blurred and Beyond. So, two Blurred and Beyond. Um, it has like this was the thing I was doing with my little logo. I would try to make the same design as the design on the front of the shirt. So that, <laughs> but yeah, too blurred and beyond. <laughs> it's more as well. <laughs> this design, I want to say the season three and season four is when I did this one. I turned it to a t-shirt because shout out our remember a green ranger josh because he wanted short sleeve so but this is actual space ranger but it's like has some little nostalgia hidden into it like a controller but yeah blur to be on podcast and this comes in different colors and of course you can buy these shirts on airdesigns.com it's like a one-stop shop but this design, this one, this one was drawn on my iPad. And then I brought the font in. That looks similar to the Peanuts font. Because I drew us as Peanuts characters. Like, so shout out Charlie Brown. But I drew the turkeys and I drew Snoopy in the little the little chicken character. I drew those. I drew us. I colored the chicken and Snoopy and all of them. But it took a while for me to color. <laughs> us because i wanted to have the outfits like a certain way and then when i was working on it a few weeks ago well i feel a month ago or so uh i um i colored us but i changed some of our shirts but here it is it's blur and beyond presents job turkeys <laughs> You can see get a bigger picture of it. <laughs> yeah. And it's all five of us. And then, of course, a real a real turkey Snoopy and that chicken character. I don't really remember that chicken character name. I ain't going to hold you. So if you do, you can comment what that chicken, whatever it is, that bird. Um, <laughs> you can you can comment what it is. But, yeah, I, I, just, I just love art and art. I, I love cartoons. So if any way I can make that into design, I will. All most of the art you seen, like um feel like I'm multifaceted. I don't have a certain range when I do art. I just try to put my heart in it. I'm I I love hard. I love I do. And I probably apologize to some people that I did have, I do have love for, because it started. I feel like is is a seed from off the big big tree of love that I have for the person that I've been talking about. And and not saying that the love I have for the people is fake. It's just like if I never fell in love with that person, then. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes it's hard to talk about, but uh, I got to. I got to talk about it. There's no other way. You can't just, you can't always keep things inside. And especially if you're a person that overthinks because you, you're going to explode. And that's, it's really unhealthy. It's unhealthy for your life as well. Cause, come on, like, <laughs> what is the end goal to for all that? There's no purpose in that. You're stressing yourself out. Why play make believe in your head on things that you know that's not true? Now you're you. It seemed like you're hurting somebody on purpose, and that's not your purpose. That's your your purpose on life. Your purpose in life. It's not. And 
and a lot of um I think for me owning up to this stuff I feel like because I know who I am and that's one of the questions I used to ask people like do you know who you are yeah I'm a person that loves to my last breath I, no matter what it is I love hard like I even got stuff tatted, tattooed on me like come on like this is real that's just who I am uh, maybe in some ways have I, <laughs> and I talked about that before you could ultimately love somebody the wrong way and I feel like I did I did I did I was I was losing somebody the right way then I was loving them the wrong way and and it led to my demise of making the wrong decision because codependency uh, I can't stand it can't stand codependency and now, because now looking back on it, it, it never dawned on me. But, oh, yeah, I know it now. <laughs> it won't happen again. Absolutely not. I'm not codependent anymore. I, definitely not. Not in the slightest. But it, it hasn't been a lot of people I have hurt. Yeah, I have hurt a lot of people. Because it, it, I know even before, there's people I've dated because I thought they and I'd probably be thinking too highly myself. They deserve they deserved a good guy, and felt like I probably was the only good guy there. So I dated these people. So, but that's no excuse. And me being in love with somebody, and then dating people that remind me of this person—that's no excuse neither. It shouldn't be dating anybody at all. Then, like, no. And that's why. I, Definitely not now. Like, and I'm give you a glimpse on why I've been talking about this stuff lately. Because in therapy, we were talking about we thought this one girl was like we thought basically the people that I've been talking to was living in this one girl's shadow, and then it came to the actualization or the realization that. All these people been living in her shadow. The one I've been talking about recently. The one that I drew the key to my heart drawing about in college. This drawing over here that I showed in the other episode. Like, all the dots are connecting. Don't be one of these people. One of these hurt people that hurt people. And and don't be one of these hurt people that don't know that they hurt and are hurting others. Uh, nah. Realize it before it's too late. Own up to your own mess. Put in the work to change the better yourself. Because um, you don't want the worst version of yourself dating somebody that you, <laughs> you that you want. You want the best version of yourself possible. No matter, like, if it was for a job or something, and you want that best version, they want the best version of you. Not just like, oh, yeah, my resume. Nah, you're not even portraying who you are. It's just fake. You just, you, you're in, it's your elevator pitch. And don't put on a facade, neither. People can see through that stuff. Yeah. That phony stuff can get spotted out from a mile away. If you're going to do these things, own it. Own it. If that's who you're going to be, own it. Like, own it. Own it. But realize if it's not something good or positive, it's going to burn you in the end. It's going to burn you in the end. Do something that's meaningful that you can look on. You're looking back on like, yeah, I, I gave my all. I put in the work that I felt like was good. Um, I put my heart into it. Don't look back and like, dang, if I did this, this could have been different. 
Like, what if I did give my all? See, now when you're older, learn from the mistakes that you made. So, and definitely, oh, if you're making the same ones over and over again, what, what did you actually learn? What did you actually learn? Like, that's a part of growing up. You're growing. You need to be growing and learning. A lot of people, those adults, they're really still kids. So, what impact can you make on somebody's life? Are you really going to change for the better? Or are you just saying these things? And I, I'm I'm speaking this stuff, but I'm speaking to myself too, because like I'm not. Yeah, I hope I'm not up here just saying this stuff for sure. I don't feel like I am. I'm being real. I've been being real the last few episodes, even past episodes too. But I'm being really real because I'm sharing a lot, and it's just a bear in my heart, my soul. Cause I know the stuff I've done. And, hmm. I know what I want out of life too. You gotta ask yourself, what what do you want out of life? We can't be just doing things for no reason. There has to be an end goal. There's, you have to know what you want. Are you gonna work towards it? Like take a leap, take take a leap of faith. Um, I'm a whole semantic, so I believe in faith. I believe in faith. Everything will work out in the end, ultimately. Hopefully. Because it was where it was meant for you, it was meant for you. And like that saying goes, you love something, you let it go. If it comes back to you, it was always yours. And that's that was been in my mind since I got back in touch with the person. Like, yeah, they did say if you love something, let it go. It's come back as yours, so not saying I got ownership over somebody. No. But I know what's mine is mine. Especially that love. That's unforgettable. So go out your day. Even go out your way. Make sure you're unforgettable. And it doesn't have to be somebody you're dating. It can be just a friend, acquaintance. Uh, somebody at work. Make sure you're making a difference in a positive way, in a positive manner. Regardless, I know it's hard sometimes because you you ain't get enough sleep that night or something, or you've been dealing with stuff, or you're constantly dealing with something. So you don't. Some people don't have a control over their emotions as well as others. So they react. They react in certain different ways. Just take this, take up, take it up as a challenge to try. Be willing to try. Everybody deserves a second chance. <sighs> Depending on what it is. But this has been the Airbrand Podcast, season three finale. Hopefully, you stay tuned for season four because we're gonna be continuing the ing season. Because oh, it was so good, it was so good, like. I, I and I supposed to have a lot of guest stars. I didn't have that many, but I carried it. I carried. So expect more of the ink season in season four. And if you would like to be on there, especially on social media, because we're gonna be going live, talking with people, asking them the same questions asked on the podcast, but just live. Join, comment. Like you wanna be a part of it too. So stay true to yourself, stay true to love, stay true to happiness, stay true to faith, stay true to fate. It'll all work out in the end. Y'all stay blessed.